person is dead, three others hurt after police say a former employee opened fire at the Freight Car America facility in Roanoke before turning the gun on himself. Police got the call just after 6 this morning. One of the victims has been released from the hospital, while the other two are listed in serious and good conditions. WSLS 10 was the first on the scene this morning. Our very own Bree Jackson now has been following this story all day, and she joins us. She's live in Roanoke. Bree, police aren't releasing many details, but what information can you give us? Well, what we do know now is much of what you have said, that there were two people killed in this incident. One was the shooter. Uh, there's also three people that were injured. I'm joined by the police chief of Roanoke City, Tim Jones. Um, and you've been out here since about 6.15, uh, not too long after you guys got the call. What can you tell us so far when it comes to this investigation? Well, we just recently, around 5 o'clock, uh, actually had our last investigator leave the scene. Uh, we're mending up what we call the peripheral issues and there are still a lot of details about circumstances that won't be fully resolved until the next 24 to 36 hours but what we do know is the proactive uh, involvement of the administrative team here at freight car america uh, in my opinion greatly minimized uh, the total number of casualties that were here today and talk with me i know uh, earlier today you guys said that there was a semi-automatic nine millimeter handgun used in this talk with me about the number of rounds that were fired in this case um, and, and how people were able to stay safe okay at this time we we, we know that it was a semi-automatic handgun and that at least 10 rounds were fired that may be off by one or two rounds but uh, my best information as of the press conference at three o'clock today were at least 10 rounds were fired in any word so far i know you guys are still investigating any word so far on whether or not uh, the victims were targeted in this case we do not have information available right now that indicates that they were targeted we will certainly pursue uh, the per peripheral information associated uh, to the suspect's uh, residence and his involvement with other people to try to clarify those types of things up and for our folks at home i guess talk with us where does the investigation go from here well, you know, we, we have to determine, uh, was there uh, a legitimate reason for him to be here? Had he reached out to anybody? What are what are the things we don't know? So we're kind of working it from that perspective. Uh, how can we bring uh, the totality of the circumstances to closure uh, and so that we can, uh, unfortunately, even in these uh, these grave circumstances, uh, we bring things away that help us prepare and mitigate circumstances in the future. All right, thank you for joining us, Chief. We appreciate your time here today and great work for you and your crews out here today. And so once again, uh, the crew, uh, the Chief has confirmed uh, some of the information that we have told you guys that the suspect used to work here um, and but was no longer employed. Uh, we were told was terminated back in March and they're still trying to figure out what drove him back here today. For more information, we'll continue to keep our viewers updated on WSLS 10 and on WSLS.com. For now, we're live in Roanoke. Bree Jackson, WSLS 10.